Okay, so it's time for us to talk about integrating an API into a Windows Store application. And to do that, I'm going to use the Foursquare API. To get access to the Foursquare APIs, you would like to register in the Foursquare Developers Portal. So once you've registered in the Foursquare Developers Portal, you can actually access your apps that you have created as a developer. And once you have created one application, you will have access to a client ID and a client secret. These are going to be strings very useful for you to access an API. Now the API that I would like to use is this endpoint right here, which is just for searching. And this endpoint, what it takes is a client ID, which is the one from your application. It takes a client secret, and it also takes some other parameters like the latitude and the longitude. This is because I would like to get the venues that are nearby. Besides the latitude and longitude, it also takes a version, which is just 2013.08.15 by default. And once you have all that is needed, you would actually have a response like this one which has a list of venues. Now I will post this endpoint in the description of this video so you can actually create your own string for you to access the list of venues. Now what I would like to do in order for this to work on the Windows application is for me to create some classes, some C -sharp classes that will be the counterpart of this JSON format in C Sharp. So as you can see, this is of course a JSON and this JSON has a meta and a response object. And inside of the response object, which is the object that I'm interested in, there's a list of venues. As you can see for this symbol right here, venues is a list and each of these venues, uh, I want to get them. And once I get them, I would like to list them on my Windows application. Now there's a very useful tool for me to get the JSON, I'm sorry, the C Sharp out of this JSON. And that is the JSON to C Sharp.com page. All I need to do is graph either the entire JSON or the URL to that JSON and paste it and click generate on the JSON to C sharp.com page. And as you can see, the code, the classes for that JSON have already been created. And I have a meta class, a contract class, but the ones that I'm interested in are really the root object, which has the response object, the response class, which has the list of venues, and finally, the venue class, which has the information that I need. Now, I will not use all of this information. So the final venue class that I use may not be as with all these properties. But I do need the ID, the name and the location. And as you can see, location is also a class. So I would like to add this class as well to my project. And all of that we are going to be doing right now. So I have created this new uh, Windows project and I would like to copy all that the JSON to C Sharp page gave me for the code. And I would like in this new Windows project, as you can see it's a Windows 8.1 project, I would like to add a new folder so I will create a new folder and I will call this folder classes. And inside of this folder, I will create a new file for the classes. And I will call this venue or Foursquare venue. Now 
And inside of this file, I will paste the entire code in here. Now I, I would like to delete some things and replace some other things maybe. So first things first, I don't really need the meta object. All I need is the response. If you remember, I have in the response of the API some meta object that really I don't find it useful, not for the purposes of my code. So all I need is the response object. Now from the response object, I only need the Venus object. I don't need the confident. It also, this response has a confident boolean object, which I don't find useful either. So I will delete that one. From the response class, uh, I'm sorry, the Venu class, I do need something. So I need the ID and let me just zoom in a little bit. I need the ID and the name, maybe the contact and the location, but I'm not going to be using any of the categories. I'm not going to check if it is verified or not. Certainly I don't want the stats, nor the URL, nor the specials here now, or referral ID. So my venue will only have an ID, a name, a contact, and a location. Now, because I only need that, I don't need a here now class. I don't need a specials class. I don't need a stats class either. I do need the location and I do need the contact. And again, I don't need the meta class. Now from the location, um, I will keep all of this. I won't use all of them, but I will keep them just in case I want to use them. And the same goes to the contact information. So now I have the classes that I need. Now what these classes are for is I want to get this JSON and I want to deserialize it to C Sharp objects. Deserialization is transforming this JSON, in this case, this JSON or a JSON to C Sharp objects. And because I want to deserialize that JSON, I do need to specify certain data contracts and data members of these classes. So these data contracts and data members are going to allow the deserialization class to identify exactly how is it supposed to change from JSON to C Sharp. So to do that, I will want to get or to say that the contact class is a data contract. So I will establish it to be a data contract like this. I need to add a using reference. And I have to do the exact same thing for the other classes. So I will copy the data contract definition. The location class should be a data contract itself as well. The same goes to the venue, to the response, and finally to the root object. Now don't worry if you don't fully understand right now the functionality of adding data contract and data members. All you have to know is that this way, an specific class will be able to transform a JSON to this C sharp. Now, besides the data contracts, I also need some data members, which are the members of the classes. To do that, I will select, I will set each of these to be a data member and the data members should have a name. And the name is just the name that those members get in the JSON. So for example, in this case, from the contact, the data members are phone, formatted phone, Twitter, etc., etc. And so what I, what I wanna do is copy the name of the property which is the exact same one as the property on the C-sharp, I'm sorry, on the JSON, and set the data member like this. 
and I want to do this for every single property of every single class on this file. So once you have done that, your application or your classes should be looking something like this. As you can see, each of the properties have a data member and the data member is setting the name to be that of the property. Now that doesn't mean that the property has to have the exact same name as the data member. In fact, I could change this. The only thing that I'm saying is that this particular property is going to be the data member from the JSON. So in this case, this address property, in fact, I could name this whatever I want. So what this is saying is that the whatever property is going to be the corresponding property to the address property in the JSON. Now I don't want to name this whatever, it's not a good thing. So I will leave it as address. But that's all it's doing. Now that, now that this is completed and each of the properties has each uh, data member, their data member, we can move on to the next lecture.